So let us continue with our I.O. versus memory bus. Let me change the cursor here. First, uh, I click all the time cursor whenever I am, uh, you know, moving from the slideshow, then I have to pick this. Anyway, there's I.O. versus memory bus uh, back here. So in this, in addition to communicating with I.O., the processor must communicate with the memory unit also. That's what I was uh, a while ago, just uh, before Anderson uh, had come here. I was talking about this. Uh, in addition to uh, this processor uh, talking to this I/O, uh, communicating to this uh, I/O devices through this I/O bus, it should be able to communicate with a memory also here. For that reason, so what is that we call uh, something called memory bus? The processor must communicate with the memory unit, like the I/O bus. The memory bus contains data, address, and read-write control lines. You see here. Uh, in this uh, I/O, you see carefully here. This I/O bus. What we see here? One is data line we see. The other is address line we see. The other is control line we see. So yesterday we spoke a lot about this data line, address line, control line. But while we talk about the memory here, memory bus here, we will be having the same data because processor will be sending what what why memory is required to write some data and to read some data from that. So one data bus is required and then memory will have some locations so what is required address is also required so that is address bus and what what control signals are required from the memory we may read from the memory or we may write to the memory so for that read write control signals are required so that's the reason why here you see uh, we have here apart from having this data apart from having this address we have read write control lines all right so there are three ways that computer buses can be used to communicate with the memory and io we are talking about now buses meaning we included in that io and memory bus both we included here remember this no confusion here there are three ways that computer computer means again 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 and this is this bus this processor this processor this processor should be able to communicate with this I/O bus. Also, should be able to communicate with the memory bus. How is that? It is going to do that. How is that? It is going to handle that. So, in three ways, it is going to handle. First is carefully listen. Examination point of view important. Use two separate buses. We have to use two separate buses. One for memory, and the other for I/O. Two separate buses, separate them, just simply separate them. One for memory, the other for I.O. The other is use one common bus. Let there be only one common bus, which is connecting uh, your I.O. devices, and also it is connecting your memory device. So one common bus for both memory and I.O. But have separate control lines for each. Separate control lines, remember. So it's, uh, I go back again here to this one. This is same. Again, the same bus may be here going for the, uh, you know, memory. Uh, that is the data line and the same address line. But use this separate control lines. For them, separately, you take control lines. So that is separate. Uh, we have to do in the second case. Use one common bus for both memory and I.O. But have separate control lines for each. The third method is use one common bus for memory and I.O. Here also in the second also same. Use one common bus for both memory and I.O. Here we are going to have separate control lines. But here we are going to have with common control lines. This is the third. So how is that really is going to happen and all in subsequent sli uh, slides we will see. So, But remember at this stage, there are three ways to communicate to the I.O. devices and the memory. These three ways are listed here. To use two separate buses, one for memory, the other for I.O. Meaning here totally data line is different, address line is different, control line is different for memory. Here data line is different and the control line is different, address line is different for the I.O. devices. But here only one common bus, meaning for uh, data for address the same, only we are separating the control line. In this case, all are set. So, 
In the first method, this is how we achieve this first method. In the first method, the computer has independent set, sets of data, address, and control buses. One for accessing memory, and the other for accessing I.O. This is done in computers that provide a separate I.O. processor in addition to the central processing unit. The meaning here, apart from having this processor, apart from the having this processor, we will be having one IOP here. So this is uh, this processor, input output processor, its job is to handle separate buses for this memory, for this IOP. Who is handling that? The processor now. Processor will instruct the IOP processor whether it wants to communicate to the uh, IO devices or whether it wants to communicate to the uh, memory devices. So who is going to facilitate that service? This IOP is going to facilitate that service to, uh, to be able to communicate to the IO devices or memory devices. That processor is requested. So who is doing that? IOP is doing that. In the first case, remember, that is the, the first case. Where we are, you know, this one. One for accessing memory and the other for IO. This is done in computers that provide a separate I.O. processor in addition to the central processing unit. The memory communicates with both a CPU and the I.O.P. through a memory bus. The same here overall so far what I was talking about going to that figure. So the same is written down here. So the I.O.P. communicates with the input and output devices through a separate I.O. bus with its own address, data, and control line. That is very obvious. I.O.P. should have separate data, separate uh, address, separate control line, so that this I.O.P. input-output processor can communicate to the I.O. devices. The purpose of the, purpose of the I.O.P. is to provide an independent pathway for the transfer of information between external devices and internal memory. The I.O. processor, input-output processor, I.O.P. nothing but input-output processor, is sometimes called data channel. So, one, two, three, four. These are the four points that you have to remember in the first case. This use two separate buses, one for memory and other for I.O. How is that possible with the help of IOP, it is possible. What IOP is doing here, it is facilitating separate path lines for the completely to access this IO devices, a separate address, data, and control. Similarly, a separate bus for the memory also. So CPU is asking the IOP to facilitate the communication between memory or the IO bus, memory bus or the IO bus. So that, that is what all about this. So let us go to this next second method and the third method. In the second method, we are calling it as an isolated. Third method, we are calling it as a memory mapped IO. Remember, very, very important. Again, I'm stressing this point. Here, if you go here, why we are calling isolated method? Because if you see here, we are separating here, separate control lines. Separate control lines meaning isolating. We are isol isolating the control line. That's why separate. Here we are using the common control lines. So uh, these common control lines is, are termed as memory mapped IO. So for second method is the isolated method, isolated IO method. Third method is memory mapped IO, wherein we are using common control lines. Here we are using separate control lines. Now Coming to this, uh, many computers use one common bus to transfer information between memory or I.O. and the CPU. From memory to CPU or from I.O. to CPU, they use majority of the computers. Many computers, most of the computers, they use one common bus. The distinction between memory transfer and I.O. transfer is made through separate read. Then how is that possible that this processor able to distinguish 
what it is sending uh, suppose it is sending a data for a printer so how is that uh, the data being sent by the processor is really going to the printer so that is what this point is talking about the distinction between a memory transfer and io transfer distinction this distinction is made through separate read and write lines the cpu specifies whether the address on the address lines is for memory word or for an interface register by enabling one of the two possible read or write lines the io read and io write control lines are enabled during io transfer for if, if at all processor is really want to communicate with the io device then io input output read and input output write control signal will be enabled if it is second point look at the second the memory read and memory write control lines are enabled during memory transfer so here please understand this I, uh, there shouldn't be any confusion here we are isolating control signals is that clear point number 1 so how do we, we are how do we separate the uh, control lines with the help of con this i o read there is a signal control signal i o write there is the another control signal if these control signals are coming out of the processor then it, it is understood that the information that address the data going through Oh, uh, here uh, you know earlier we have uh, shown here this data, this address is actually meant for I/O devices. Why? The reason is this control. What is coming out the control? Control is coming out I/O read or I/O write. So for that purpose, it is very much understood by this interface modules that oh, this control signal is for me because it's the I/O read or I/O write. It's not a memory read or memory write. if that is the case then it is going here the other side for the memory so the second one if you see here the memory read and the memory write control lines are enabled during memory transfer so we are simply playing with the control lines here if we want to transfer anything to the io we are enabling io read and io write control lines if you want to send anything to the memory then we are simply enabling depending upon the read or write memory read or memory write So with this mechanism, but uh, having a separate uh, control signals, we are able to handle with the uh, that uh, using the common bus, but but two separate control lines. Is that clear to everyone? I am just uh, uh, pausing here because the, it needs to be cleared here. Uh, without uh, this clearance, again, uh, you will mess up. Is that clear uh, to everyone? If if someone having a doubt, you can ask about uh, about that uh, concept, like a common bus, two separate uh, control lines, and we also call that mechanism as a isolated mechanism. So, if you don't have any doubts, again I request here uh, in a chat window, you please type no. If you have doubt, if you have doubt, then you please uh, unmute yourself. and talk to me somebody typed muhammad arbaz sir voice is breaking uh, in between muhammad arbaz can you unmute yourself am i clear to you muhammad arbaz muhammad arbaz help me out by unmuting yourself and talking to me muhammad arbaz on the screen you see mic uh, you simply have to touch that the uh, cross should go so at that time you can talk to me uh, muhammad arbaz yeah my audible to you muhammad arbaz i don't know you uh, muhammad arbaz uh, whether able to uh, get my voice or not he's not ch uh, chatting also he's not doing uh, muhammad arbaz ah, yes uh, he did thank you arbaz Uh, others, uh, I guess uh, you don't have any doubt. I think, sir, I O read means what actually it is, sir? I O read. Okay, it's nothing. It's a. It's a. I I just go. Let me go there here. Yeah. Oh, let me go there. Oh. This is simply uh, just a signal. Yes, yeah, you have mux, right? For example, you have two is to one or two by one mux. Suppose, okay. 
you you keep uh, communicating to me uh, arbas uh, yeah arbas yes ha, sir ha. in that much uh, the select line is there select line yes sir ha so that select line is uh, nothing but uh, a control line let us say that select line is a control line okay okay so select line when zero then line a is selected or if you are using two two by one marks or two is to one marks if select line is a zero a line is uh, kept on the output y yes sir if uh, select line is one then b line is kept on y yes sir so meaning this select line is actually working like a control line okay Okay. Ah, likewise, likewise, we we if you go here, that is, uh, let me go again here. That is this figure. Uh, you see this figure, uh, uh, the one uh, who is talking, Arbaz, I guess. Yes, sir. Yes, ah. sir. Salman. Sir. Ah, Salman. Yes. Ah, Salman. Here, you see these lines here. Yes, sir. Ah, so these on these lines, this processor actually. putting some signal here like a select line like select uh, on max example i took uh, uh, yes yeah select line yes are you getting yes sir ha uh, likewise it is just putting some signal here so if it is actually intending to communicate to the io devices it is putting here a signal we are for our purpose we are calling it as a uh, io read that is input output read the way select line is there like that i go read so something if you want to take from the keyboard you want to read from the keyboard so i go read okay this okay. so suppose the processor wants to write some data onto the magnetic disk it is i go write input output right. write 